My name is Lisa. I'm Saratoga Knitting on Instagram and on Ravelry, and I welcome you to my home today. I live in a very old house in Marblehead, Massachusetts. This house was built as a warehouse in um, 1750 and then was converted into a residence in 1801. So we feel very, very lucky to live here. It's very old and dusty. Lots of little cracks and crevices here, but we love it. Um, I live right, uh, I live in, in, in a little harbor town just about 20 miles north of Boston and I can see from the top floor, we can see the harbor um, from here, but we really just uh, love it. I live in what's called Old Town Marblehead, so all of the houses down here by the harbor are very, very old, um, usually from um, starting in the 1600s um, uh, on up, but we are, we feel very lucky to live here and I'm, I welcome you here today to, um, to talk about some knitting. Uh, we're going to do some uh, finished objects. I have a few, some works in progress. We're going to do a sock pattern giveaway that I promised the last time, and then we'll do some chatter at the end. So let's get started. Finished objects. I do have a few to show you today. The first one is sitting right here behind me, and this is the uh, Kiruna shawl, and it is by Ronya. Pacaleto, and this I uh, did as part of a knit along with uh, the Knit My Way Home podcast with Loretta and Natalia, uh, who live up in the Yukon in Canada, and they are a mother and daughter, and they just have a lovely, lovely podcast. Uh, they have been podcasting outside for the most part, which is really fun. Uh, when they first started, they were um, they were sitting out in the snow, which mm, kudos to them. <laughs> I don't know that I could ever I could ever do that, but um, yeah, I've been really enjoying their podcast. It's a fairly new podcast, uh, I think mm, three or four episodes out now, but it's just really sweet, and um, you should uh, you should check it out. I'll put the link down um, down below in the description box as well. This was a beautiful beautiful shawl to to make. I also have it um, attached here with a lovely shawl pin that I have from uh, from Leslie Wind. And I knit this shawl out of the Nutiden yarn, which is the unspun, um, unspun yarn from Sweden, which is just gorgeous, beautiful, beautiful to work with. Uh, I've shown it to you before, and if you remember, it, as I said, it's unspun, so it's very, it, it comes apart easily, so you just need to be careful when you're knitting. You can't be stressed out or pulling your yarn. It's very easy to, to just kind of spit splice together again, but you do want to watch uh, watch that when you do it, but it's just a gorgeous, beautiful yarn, um, very lightly processed, and it just smells sheepy when you when you get it in the in the package, and it's just uh, it's just lovely. Caroline um, and her partner Knut uh, recently bought a um, small spinning mill in Sweden, and they do everything themselves um, right in the, in the mill. Um, she does have a Patreon account, and I have been a patron in the past, and it is, um, it's just, it's just lovely. She has lots of uh, lovely videos that she puts up um, as well, talking about just her, just her life in general, and uh, her knitting progress, and what, what's happening in the, in the mill, and it's lovely. And I really enjoy knitting with this, with this yarn. Now you'll see that it's two different colors. This was a really, this is a really interesting pattern because it starts out, it's basically all garter for all the increases, and then it moves into this lovely lace pattern at the bottom. Now this is all Nutiden, however I held it double with uh, lace weight yarn. So on the top here I used a burgundy colored lace weight and I was going to run out of that lace weight. I knew I had enough to do the top portion of it but not enough to finish it. So what I thought I would do is do a contrast and the basic color is the same but on the bottom here on the lace part I paired it with a, um, a cream colored lace weight and I think the contrast is beautiful and it, it really just brings uh, brings it all out. Um, this is way too warm to, to wear right now but this is going to be a beautiful beautiful shawl for um, for the winter um, for the winter time and I think the knit along is going um, maybe going to the 
through the summer, or no, it's from the summer to, to the, was it to the summer solstice? I forget, but it's a beautiful knit along. They have a, um, a, a group on Ravelry. You can go out and you can go and check out all the, um, the finished objects there, the finished, uh, the finished shawls there. And people have just been making beautiful combinations of, uh, of yarn. And this was a really a joy, a joy, joy, joy to knit. And this will be um, extremely warm for me come, come this next winter. Uh, the other thing that I did with this is I blocked this on my mother-in-law's laundry line out in the back of her house which is the way I really like to do shawls uh, now. As far as, um, as far as blocking goes, it really <laughs> makes, it, makes a difference. And I'll, I'll put a picture in here, but if you follow me on Instagram, you did see a picture of it, but I just hang it up and use the clothespins and clothespin the entire V of the shawl, the bottom of it. So those give, they, they don't make any marks on the shawl, but they give it enough weight so that it, it, it falls down and really opens opens everything up. So I didn't have, don't have to do any pinning. I don't have to use my entire bed or an entire floor to do that. It works really great. dries really fast uh, in just the light breeze and the, and the sunlight. And it's just, it's like magic because you put it up there and it's wet and heavy. And then you come back a couple of hours and it's this lovely, it's this lovely light um, beautiful but lofty um, uh, lofty yarn and it was it's just a great way to it's a great way to do it I highly recommend it and I, I am really looking forward to, um, to using this in the next winter so you will see me about out and about um, with this with this on um, the second project that I want to show you has I, I don't think I've shown this before on the podcast and again I used new tea and yarn. I got a big order um, from from, uh, from Caroline, and and so this is basically the same the same yarn. This is a tubular scarf. I don't have any clasps on it. I'm not sure what I will do. Basically, it goes around um, around your neck. You could just wear it like this. I put it in here. I could use a little shawl pin. I could do something like this. I may gift this. I'm not I'm not quite sure yet, but it's extremely it's extremely warm. And it's it was basic, it's a basically a tube, so all the way through, and then so basically I just knit this as if it were a sock. I started off with the toe, and just uh, increased up to where I wanted, and then just kept knitting round and round and round, and then I did the same thing. I decreased down um, as if you were doing a um, a cup down um, sock uh, for the for the following toe, and I just did that here, and again. You'll notice that the colors are a little bit different. So this is this same um, ball of Nutidin. I had a, a couple of plates of this. And I held the Nutidin double in this. And then I had had a contrasting color of Nutidin as well. And so I used that light purplish color with the dark burgundy. And I think it just gives it, it gives a nice little beautiful contrast there. Very, very, very warm. Very, very warm. It goes all the way down and comes in at the bottom. Um, it is, I have not blocked this. I did not wash this yet, so it still feels a, a little bit scratchy, but um, that would be perfectly fine for, or for, for me. I may gift this to my mother-in-law. I'm not sure she really loves things that kind of cover her chest in the wintertime, but I was really pleased with this. The pattern for this I got um, through, uh, it's an Elizabeth Zimmerman pattern, and I got it uh, from the Wool Gathering magazine. Um, Schoolhouse uh, Press puts out uh, wool gathering um, quarterly, I believe. So this was the one I got back in. So this was March. Um, so this was uh, last March, March of this is actually a year ago, March of 2020. And it's called this tubular scarf. And it just has lots of options. You could do a color work on this scarf. You can do really whatever you want. You could start it off and just make it um, square, not you know, not um, not tapered like I did like I did here. There are just so many options you could um, you can decide to do. But the wool gathering from Schoolhouse Press is really great. It's very economical and yet you get an amazing amount of information and you get patterns in uh, in this. And so you'll have uh, articles from uh, Elizabeth Zimmerman's daughter Meg Swanson and you have lots of different um, lots of of different knitting tips and, and options. So this is these are different options for end for the ends of the circular uh, circular scarf. Uh, suggestions on types of yarn to use for it. Original pictures from when, when uh, Elizabeth did this years and years ago, and some again weaving. You know you've got some pictures here showing you how to weave together two ends, and it just gives you some charts and some different information. You know as you can kind of 
do this as as you um, as you as you will. It's designed to be used in the um, knit in the unspun un Icelandic. So this was not this is not Icelandic. This is Swedish, but it's basically unspun unspun Swedish. So it is the same. And here's just another version here um, on the back. So wool gathering from Schoolhouse Press, and this is really uh, this is a great a great option um, if you are interested in Elizabeth Zimmerman type patterns. And as I said, it comes out quarterly, so once um, once every every quarter you'll get this in the mail, and it's like a gift to yourself because I'm like I'm always surprised. I'm like oh, I forgot about this, and here it comes. And um, so yeah, I really I really enjoy this and. I don't always knit something from it, but I always read it. It's really great reading, and you know, you'll find some type of a, a tip in there or something you're like, oh, I never thought about doing that that way. That's very interesting. Um, things to do uh, in uh, in uh, in the wool gathering. So I highly recommend this. Let's see. So then I have a couple of socks. You know, I'm always knitting my socks. So the first pair. Here, let me stick these back on the sock blocker. These are the Sock Nest, sock nest Socks <laughs> by uh, Salapalooza Knits, so Elizabeth, and she does these beautiful, she did, she has several different sock patterns, but this is a, a pattern that I did recently. I had, I just had never, I had never made it before. Um, so this is, here, let me put it this way. These are, this is a beautiful sock. Here. And these are mirror socks, so this beautiful cable pattern goes down the outside of your sock. So on, on one sock you're doing this on the right side, on the other you're doing it on the on the left side, but this is beautiful. The yarn is uh, from uh, La, France, La France's hand, um, hand dyed yarn, and I really liked this. This is really beautiful, and the color was just gorgeous and, and perfect, so I'm really, really pleased with these. Again, I do all my socks toe up. With the fish lips kiss heel no matter what the pattern says and i'm really and then i just do the the different pattern that they're that they're asking me to but these came out beautifully and i will look forward to again not wearing them now but <laughs> wearing them in the fall when i have to go back to boston um so that is my first pair of socks that i've uh, i have completed and i have a second pair i'll put those back on the sock blockers so my Compatriot in Knitting, my sister-in-law Tracy, has been doing um, Patricia uh, Nitography on, um, on Instagram. So Patricia lives in Norway, and she is an expat. She's originally from Texas, and she lives in Norway with her husband and her two, her two children. And she has been doing uh, an amazing job on her small little farm. And she has been raising um, some sheep there. She's now producing some uh, yarn from her wool, which is wonderful. And she just has a wonderful, wonderful uh, way about her. And she has been doing classes all the way through the, the all the way through the pandemic. So she's she started with a mitten class that I did. I don't even know how long ago it was. Now was it last a year ago winter? Now, but she did the. Um, the traditional Norwegian um, mittens and that was a class that you took and you got the pattern and you got all kinds of information from her and she put up videos for you and we had zoom meetings etc and then throughout this this year she's also been doing she's also been doing different talks by uh, Norwegian um, designers um, and knitters and that has been really fun to do really economical but just a great to spend a, two hours on a Sunday afternoon and and hearing um, someone uh, speak, it's people that you probably wouldn't be able to um, to see in person. So that's one advantage of, of Zoom and, and what we've been doing here during the pandemic. But um, so Tracy's been doing that and she's done all of her classes. She had a, she had a, a traditional uh, Coptic class for a winter sweater. And she had, I think, no, they're doing that. I think they're doing that now. They had, she had a class for a summer sweater. So Tracy did the summer sweater. I think she's either done or almost done with that one. And the, she decided she's going to take go ahead and take the class for the summer, um, for the winter sweater that, that Patricia is doing. Um, that, I mean, I would love to do that, but it seemed it was just like a little bit of a too much of a time commitment, I think, for for me and what, um, you know, what what's going on with me right now. So I decided not to, to do that. But Tracy messaged me and said, you know, Kate Davies is coming out with a sock 
club for the summer. And I was like, mm, I could probably do that one. So uh, I did. I signed up for it, and it is the Blue Stocking Sock Club. So I, I don't remember. I think we've now gotten three patterns. I don't remember how many we're going to get, maybe two more. But it is, it's really interesting because, you know, as you know, Kate Davies is a, is a scholar before she's anything else. So the Blue Stocking Sock Club is um, uh, are sock designs that are celebrating different women in history. And it starts out with the, um, the, the, um, the, the woman who started the Elizabeth Montague, who actually was the original Blue Stocking for the Blue Stocking Club. They were a group of women who would get together and, and, um, and, and talk and discuss, and discuss things. And I think, if I recall, this is going to be a really basic explanation, but um, they had blue blue stockings were just stockings or socks that you wore that you when you weren't going out fancy. I think if you were going out somewhere or going to an event, you, if you were wealthy enough, you had white or silk stock, stockings that you would wear. If you're just sitting around at home, you'd have the blue stockings. And so when they would, they would just be relaxing. And so they ended up got, being called the Blue Stocking Club. But it's really nice. And this is the first pair that I have done. And again, this is the Elizabeth Montague. And this is really very beautiful. It's just a beautiful little lace pattern on it. They are um, they are designed to be toe up and they're toe up the way I do them with the Russian start, um, the Russian start. So uh, that that worked really well for me. It was pretty exciting. I think they, they don't have the, they don't use the fish lips kiss heel, but I just use that because it fits really well and I, I know how to do that so easily but this these are really they were really beautiful really easy to 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 do and they were designed the way I like them is just the pattern on the front and just with the stockinette in the uh, in the back of the in the back of the leg and I, I really like to do that anyway so this was just the perfect <laughs> the perfect pair of socks for me I actually used this um, the yarn for this is called flora and fauna and it's some sustainably uh, dyed yarn from um, Virginia Beach and it is dyed with matter root, so that was really, really pretty. And Sophia brought this home to me as a gift when she went to Virginia for her best friend's wedding um, last, uh, was it in April? I think it was in April, yep. So then she brought this yarn back to me for me, and it has a little sparkle to it, too. I don't know if you can see that, but it's got a little bling there, which is really, really pretty. So, um, so yeah, so this was the first sock in the sock club. The second pattern we have and I did start it I didn't bring it upstairs with me today but I did start that one that one also is very very nice it almost has a diamond shape pattern on it and we just got the third <laughs> the third um, pattern was downloaded today so I have to have to take a look at that one but I wouldn't start it until I finish this um, this other pair but this is really fun this is perfect for me nice summer light um, light knitting so this is really this is my uh, kind of my jam for what I want to do in this in the summertime um, and I blame I blame Tracy for <laughs> for this but I'm really I'm really happy uh, happy with that um, so and then I also have um, some finished spinning which I will hold on and get for you okay so I finally finished this beautiful um, beautiful pack of yarn it is uh, the name of it's called fire pit and it's by three waters farm and it's mixed to bfl top so blue face luster and it is just beautiful it's probably i don't know i'm gonna lose the the end of it here it's some it's here somewhere there it is yes my, my bait noir and doing these things it's like you lose the i lose the end uh, on my bobbins but here it is here so it's probably a you know, it's going to be a, um, it probably, it's probably a fingering weight yarn, I'd say, in on average, but fingering maybe to a really light DK, but it's really, really beautiful. I plan probably to use this as the yoke of a sweater, which I'll probably do, I'll do over the winter time. Um, I don't have a, a dis, I don't have a pattern in mind yet, but this is what I would anticipate doing, is that I would use this for a, um, for a yoke, um, a yoke pattern on a, uh, on um, yeah on a on a nice sweater um, so that's really what I'm looking forward to doing with this my upcoming spin that I'm going to start is this gorgeous gorgeous braid of um, combed wool top and this is from Kayleen of Little Bean um, Loves Yarn she lives here in Marblehead so she's lo very local to me but the colors on this are just gorgeous I saw that she put this up and I was like yep that's 
that's coming home with me. And so I'm really eager to get this on the wheel now that I have the Three Waters Farm uh, finished finished up. I am still spinning the uh, the grayish brown color uh, from Carol at Foster Sheep Farm, and that I anticipate will will be. I want to do enough so I can make the, a sweater with that. So I may match that with this um, in the end. But that's my that's my plan. That's still that's on the wheel. That will be taking a while. I just kind of do that. Um, slowly as I go through as I go through the summer but this this is going to get um, prepped and ready to ready to go on my wheel next so that's all my finished objects so let us move on now to works in progress works in progress I have a few as I always do I think I have a few more than three but I'm finishing up I'm finishing up a couple, so get back to that. Get back to that having pretty much only three on the needles, but we'll see. So my first one is a, an additional bits and bobs blanket. If you remember, I did one of these a few years back. Um, it's just a great project to kind of pick up and, and put down. The pattern is by Kay Jones of the Bakery Bears, and you're basically holding two uh, two yarns together and knitting them in this lovely pattern that just makes this really beautiful squishy. Uh, squishy squishy fabric um, it is not fisherman's rib it look kind of looks like fisherman's rib but it is not but it is really beautiful this is going to be a baby blanket for a friend of mine so um, I've started this out here you can see it has these it has the beautiful ridges on it the last one I did I used two different colors of fingering weight yarn and I kind of just chose them as I as I went along so it was very random this time uh, I'm doing using this color, the white color, all the way through, and also with this color. So I'm, I'm pairing these two together. So we get the, the white, the cream, the white cream, and then the, you know, the striping from, um, from this yarn. These are from, this first one is Dream Baby DK. And this one is actually uh, West Yorkshire Spinners Bo Peep DK. And I really am loving them both. They're super, super soft. So these are washable. So uh, my friend can actually just throw, throw it in the wash when, uh, when, when, uh, when she needs to, but I, um, I got these at my local yarn shop, Marblehead Knits. Um, she was having a sale and I went in and I was like, I'm going to, I'm going to get these. They're just really beautiful. Perfect. So I can just, I just leave this by the TV and I just will pick this up on days that I'm, I'm not ready to, to deal with something too complicated. Plus I do need to, I do want to get it, um, get it done by the end of the, by the end of the summer, but this is just really pretty, beautiful, squishy, and I think she will love it. So that is the Bits and Bobs blanket that I am working on. And my second one is unusual for me. I, you know, everybody does the different blankets. And what happened was that Ina Knits did a, uh, did, um, a tutorial um, on her YouTube channel. And it was how she does her mitered square blanket. And, you know, I'm not, I don't really crochet. So I'm not really into the, the crocheted blankets and... Um, I really like the bits and bobs, which is really great, but I thought I would try something different. And she explains it very, very, um, very easily about how she does it. And her mitered square blanket is uh, colors in the, in the middle of the squares and then a black border all the way around. And I really liked, I really liked that. I liked the way that looked. So what I did is I got uh, some, what is this? This is DK, um, oop, it's Knit Picks Brava. And so it's acrylic, so I figure I'm going to just do a do a blanket, and I, again, I could just throw it in the wash if um, if need be. And I'm using two colors, so I'm using this burgundy color for the middle, and then the black for uh, for the border. And you just pick up and knit each square off of the off of the first one. So I'm not quite far enough yet for a full blanket. I'll probably add maybe three. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So maybe 10 or 12. So I might do four more to make it um, make it large enough. Um, so this would be the bottom or the top um, of, the, of the blanket. And this really is just something what, that you can see here. So you just you start at one corner and you do with the decreases and you end up at, um, at, the, at the other. And then you end up um, picking up along the side and then adding on to your, your next one. And this is something that I just kind of have decided to, to pick up. So if I sit down and I have something I'm going to watch, I don't feel like working on any of my current projects, I'll just, just pull this out. And this will probably take me, I don't know, maybe half an hour, maybe half an hour at the most, 
to do a square, so it's great if I just want to take a little break and, and pull something different out. I have no I have no deadline for this at all, so this is just kind of I'm gonna kind of just go until I feel it's the right size. But it was it's something different. Um, you know, you just don't you it, it's a little you have to think about it a little because you you know you're you're doing this decrease, this middle decrease in here, but it's just kind of just enough. And you and you don't have to look at a pattern at all you know where you are by by looking at your by looking at your stitches so it was really um once i got going with it once i did the first one i was like oh i, I understand this this is something i could i could do and i really enjoyed it but the tutorial is great because as i said it, it you know i've seen these blankets and i've thought about it and i, I haven't found a, a I haven't found something that shows me exactly what how it works really well and uh, Ina Nitz did, does that. It's really, um, it's really pretty. And I'll, I'll put the link to um, to her uh, podcast down here in the down below as well. So if you're interested in it, you can take a look as well. But I'm really happy with this. Again, this is no deadline on this. This is just kind of pick up and pick up and go um, as I uh, as I as I want to. The third project I'm really enjoying this. Really, really enjoying this. Um, and I'm coming to the end of it. So, but I have I have enjoyed this so much. And I think it's a combination of the pattern, and certainly a lot of it is the actual yarn that I'm using. And again, I got this yarn at uh, my local yarn shop, Marblehead Knits, and it is gorgeous. It is Astro, it is 30% alpaca, 20% merino, and 50% tencel. So, and it's from the, um, the alpaca yarn company. So here's the, here's the ball band. And, um... I saw I saw this yarn and I'm like I have I have to I have to buy this because the colors were just gorgeous. So I have I got two colors. Uh, I got this lovely green mossy color and I got this beautiful burgundy color. And I can't even tell I cannot even tell you how soft this is. It's amazing. It's amazingly soft. Amazingly soft. And I, I spent a lot of time trying to figure out what I wanted to do with this. I knew I wanted to make some type of a cowl um, pattern with it, but I, I took a long time thinking about it and looking at it and how I wanted to do it. Did I want to do stripes? Did I want to be changing uh, changing it up all the time? Did I want to do it in rows? And I just wasn't sure. Uh, and then I came across this pattern, and it is called... It is, oops, here it is. It's called the Meditate Cowl, and it is by Elizabeth Doherty. And I looked at it. I really liked the way it looked, and I'll probably put a picture up here if I can. And you know, I read through um, I read through people's comments on on Ravelry. That's always a good a good thing to do to see if there's any you know any uh, bumps in the road, so to speak, on the on the pattern. Some people had difficulty with it, and be, and because you have to pay it you have to pay attention to it but it, it's you have to pay attention i would say at the beginning of it and then you don't really have to pay that much attention you 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 do i have ha i have had to rip it back a couple of times because i've been watching it while i'm like watching line of duty or something <laughs> season 6 oh my gosh <laughs> it's finally here <laughs> on 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 acorn tv Woo. and um you know, if I, I get, if I don't pay attention, I'm like, oh, darn it, I need to go, I need to go back. And with this pattern, you can't really hide, hide your errors. Not that, you know, anybody's going to be going through and looking at, um, looking at this, but it is a, um, you know, it's, it's, you're, you're slipping some stitches and you're knitting some stitches. So you, you, you have the pattern. It looks the same. I mean, it's mirrored on both sides. Here, it's mirrored on both sides. But you have to pay attention, you know, you need to slip, knit, slip, knit, and then knit, and then knit, slip, knit. So, so you do have to pay attention, but if you're even giving it a nominal look, you're like, oh yeah, I, I can tell where I can tell where I am here. Um, the, the, other, the only other issue that I had with this yarn, and again, I knew it from the start, and because um, Kate from the yarn shop had warned me, it's a little bit splitty because it's not... You probably can't see that here, but it's not overly spun. It's it's spun. It's single, so it, it's there's there's um you know it's just that one one um one strand of, of of yarn with all the fibers in it, 
and it's very strong. It doesn't pull apart or anything, but it can be a little bit splitty if you're not paying attention. So I have had to watch that, but that's been, but that's been fine. And it is just, it is just beautiful. The colors make it elegant, I think. And I just basically split it in two. So I just knit all of the green skein that I had, and then I added on the, this, the beautiful burgundy color, and I'm almost, I'm almost done. I have very little left. And I think what I'm going to do is make this, um, I am going to, I haven't decided yet. I'm either going to knit it together at the end, so attach it completely, or I might overlap it. I think the pattern is designed to have a button band here at the end. I don't know if I'm going to put a button band on it. I'm, I'm thinking I may, I'm, if I'm going to do anything with buttons, I'm more likely just to um, to kind of fold it over and tack it together and then put buttons that are decorative on here. I have some really pretty buttons that I'm, I'm thinking of using. So, but when I get to that point and figure that out, I, I will, um, I'll show you what my final decision is on this, but this is going to be real, is big. This will be able to go around my neck a couple of times. Perfect, perfect, perfect for the winter. Again, no rush. <laughs> this is not something I'm going to use right now for sure, but I, I have really, really enjoyed this. The pattern is lovely and you know, any errors that I've made are my errors, not the pattern, patterns, errors. Everything's very clear. It's actually a very simple pattern actually when you do it, which is why it's called meditate. Um, but the yarn has certainly made this, uh, made this project for me. I just love, oh, I just love picking, picking this up. So this has been beautiful. So it's the meditate, um, the meditate cowl. I'm really really highly recommend it and use some beautiful soft yarn if you have the opportunity to do so. Then let's see my final work in progress is still my work in progress from before and this is the Kufel sweater also by Kate Davies. I did finish the big the bag full of, of yarn. I'm using this really big cone of Jameson and Smith. And then I have all my colors, which I'm not using right at the, well, I will be starting to use them, but not like, not yet. And so I have finished, I don't actually need that. I have finished the body, the, 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 the body up till the, up till the armholes. It doesn't, it looks short, but it, it's actually, it's actually, it's rolled up here at the top and it will, it will block out more. But so this is the body of it on holders so we have the really pretty color work down here at the bottom and the color work the, the yarn I'm using for color work is uh, Knit Picks palette but they're really pretty 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 colors and I have finished one sleeve I forgot to turn my phone off um, sorry about that so uh, the sleeve I'm finished one sleeve and again you start at the, with the colors here at the bottom beautiful and then you increase to go up and up to the top so this comes right um, this will come right up to the well, it's to the under, right up to the right up to the um, right up to the underarm finally here. So that's that's perfect. Uh, I measured it against uh, my other sweater that I did by Kate Davies. It's perfect. Um, so that's great. So now I have to do one more sleeve, attach the sleeves, and then I'll be on to the onto the collar work. So this is great. Again, this is one, besides the collar work and the increases. This is just knitting in the round. It'll be more intense when I get to the to the color work on the yoke, but I'm not quite there yet. I need to do this this second sleeve first, but I'm getting there. I'm really excited about this. This is again going to be a beautiful, uh, beautiful sweater for the um, for the early fall, and I'm looking forward to it. And it's really fun to knit off of a cone like this. I got this cone from the Woolly Thistle. Um, it's got so much, so 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 much yarn on it, but uh, yeah, it's really. It's really satisfying to have a big cone of yarn that you're just you're just pulling from. I know some people will uh, undo the undo it and uh, make separate balls out of it, but I really just like knitting it off the cone. I just throw it on my chair or put it on the floor, and then boom, you're just you're just pulling the yarn right off. Um, no, no issues with that whatsoever, and I really enjoy knitting uh, knitting with this. So, I think those are all my works <laughs> in progress for for right now. So uh, let's move on to the sock pattern giveaway. Sock pattern giveaway. All right. The last time I mentioned that I had completed these beautiful smoky cable socks, and they are by Julia of the Happy Knitting Podcast. 
And I just love this pattern. It is just, just beautiful. There are all these lovely uh, cables here in the front. And again, just plain in the back. I love that. Um, I did them toe up with the Fish Lips Kiss Heel, but the pattern itself is just beautiful. I can't wait again to wear these in the, in the fall, in the fall. Um, but yeah, so these are really beautiful. And Julia very kindly um, offered to give away a pattern um, for these socks uh, for me here on the podcast. And so I asked people to uh, comment below in the last YouTube video that I did. And um, I did the random number generator. And the comment uh, number 66 is the winner, and that is Mary McDade. And Mary said, I love sock knitting because it is so portable. Plus, I really love knitting all those beautiful hand-dyed yarns that I would never wear in a garment. Now, isn't that, that the truth? Absolutely. I totally agree. Socks are a great, great way to use up uh, any of those special uh, special skeins of yarn that you, that you pick up maybe at a, at a yarn show or traveling to a, a special yarn shop you can't resist and socks are really a great way to do that I every um, you know every fall that every day when I go into work I wear a pair of socks now you know I am a sock knitter so I have a drawer full of socks and it probably it probably it could take me probably a month to get through all of the socks that I have so people are always stopping me and looking at my socks and like Ooh, which ones are you wearing today and did you make those and you know they they um, yeah people notice and it's just like a little a little pop of, of, uh, of color um, and sometimes crazy color because I you know I use really any color to, to knit socks with so that's that's always fun for me I'm always like interested to see how many people will like hey what, what are you wearing your socks and, and invariably during the day someone will someone will ask me so that's really fun and it's a great way to um, to um, to use up those special hand dyed yarns that, that you have um, in your stash so um, Mary, uh, I'm going to put my email down uh, below here in um, uh, in the description. And if you can, you can email me and let me uh, let me know. I'll contact Julia. If you you know you can tell me. Um, you can also contact me uh, on Ravelry. I'm Saratoga Knitting on Ravelry, and or you can DM me on Instagram again, Saratoga Knitting, and I will um, I'll I'll, I'll uh, message Julia and we'll we'll get that pattern to you, whether it's through Ravelry or um, on, or another fashion. And thank you everyone for all the comments. I read them and enjoyed every single every single one of them. Um, yeah, and we'll do a giveaway again in the in the future. So thanks. So let's move on to some chatter. Right, what has been happening, um, as usual, quite a bit. <laughs> so summer is finally upon us. I love summertime here in Marblehead. It's pretty busy. And here in the United States, we, well, actually in Massachusetts, I think we have over 70% of the adults are vaccinated, fully vaccinated. So the governor ended the state of emergency two weeks ago now, I think. And um, everything basically is opened up again. There are no limits on um capacity in restaurants or venues and you do not have to wear a mask unless you want to uh and if you're fully vaccinated you're not required to wear a mask so most stores now have dropped that requirement um it's very strange i have to admit after wearing a mask for so long it's very very strange to go out of the house with without them and it's it, it, i'll get halfway somewhere and i'll panic because i don't have the mask and i'm like no no i'm, I'm okay i'm good um, we both, Mark and I both, and Sophia too, I should say, we all three got our both both doses of the Pfizer vaccine here. Um, the first one was fine. We just had a little bit of a sore arm. Mark didn't really have trouble with either one of them, but um, he just kind of felt a little off. Whew, the second one hit me like a ton of bricks. I almost feel like it's a it's a badge of honor to have gone through that second uh, that second shot. I felt pretty just achy and I had a really, really bad headache. Um, my arm was pretty sore, uh, it, but that really only lasted for 24 hours. Sophia did the same thing. There are most, most people here, a lot of people in the United States are trying because they, there's, they schedule, you have your first one and then they schedule your second one three weeks out. So you know when your second test, your second shot is going to be. So uh, most people have been um, either just calling in sick that day or have pre-planned a sick day for the day after their second shot. Because the, I think the majority of people um, are affected by it, and it's not a bad thing. It just means that your immune system is is recognizing that that um, that is something that uh, that that you need to need to fight. So um, it was it was worth it to go through that go through that one. 
I've had a ton of shots this year. This is the year of shots because I did get, I was was able to get um, two, two doses of the shingles shot. I think I've mentioned that before. Um, if you have had, if you have had chicken pox as a child, then you still have that, that virus in your body and it can come out as an adult in shingles, which are just extremely, extremely painful welts. And it doesn't, it's not this, doesn't look the same as chicken pox in an adult, but it is extremely painful. It can affect your nerves and it's just something you do not want to have. My brother, um, has had a case of shingles. Mark has had it twice. His brother has had it, and we had a really good friend uh, in Florida who just who just was, if he got an outbreak, it was horrendous. So it's really something that um, that you want to avoid, and they have a really good vaccine for that now that you take, uh, I think, once every five years or so, but it's two doses. So I had the first dose. I was fine during that. The second dose, again, kind of knocked me out, so I've had a couple of days of of uh, not feeling great with uh, with with um, with vaccines, but that's okay. And Sophia and I, last week or the week before, we got uh, fully vaccinated for the trip to Egypt. So I, I had to get a, I think hepatitis. I had to get the two hepatitis shots, and I had to get a typhoid shot. And Sophia had to get three because she had to get the um, the measles, mumps, and rubella. I think. Um, booster, and then she had to get the hepatitis as well in the, in the, in the typhoid. So we are all set. So I'm like, I think I'm done with shots. Plus I got a flu shot this year. So it's probably going to start coming around all of a sudden September will be here. And they're like, time for your flu shot once again. I'm like, oh boy. Um, but yeah, I've had a lot of shots, <laughs> had a lot of shots in this arm, um, this year, but, but, but all is, all is good. Uh, we certainly in Massachusetts, I, you know, there's a lot of places in this country that are not fully vaccinated. Um, but Massachusetts, you know, I'm, again, I'm lucky to live, uh, live here where we've had the, we've had it available to us and, um, it's available pretty much now on a walk-in basis, um, at most, at most pharmacies. So that's, it's just really, really, really a good, a good, good thing. Um, yeah, just, I, I can't even, yeah, it's been a year <laughs> as for everyone. It's been, it's been a year. Um, I did, uh, just a, a mini swap with, uh, my, a friend of mine, um, Marianne from, um, from, she's in, lives in Maryland and we got together and we did a swap that was kind of, um, based on where we live. So I got, a, I got some beautiful yarn and I got all kinds of information on, on, on Maryland and, uh, I got, um, some, uh, Crab related items because Maryland is is known for its crabs and of course I sent her lobster items because Massachusetts and it was it was just kind of a funny thing we didn't even really think about it as we were doing it until we until we messaged later that um you know that we're both seafood <laughs> seafood related crustacean I, I suppose I should say um related uh related areas but that was that was really fun it was just a nice it was just a nice thing to do um in the middle of in the middle of the, in the middle of the, of the spring. So I'm happy with that. Um, I know that, uh, lots of the, um, yarn festivals are trying to come back. Uh, Rhinebeck is, is on this year from what I've heard. And now that this may change from what I've heard, the vendors, it's not probably not a lot of the big vendors this year because they're not using the indoor venues. So it will be outdoors only. Um, Sophia and I are not going to go this year. We talked about it with Tracy, but I think probably what we're going to just is just, we're just going to give it a rest this year and wait until next year, until things are, you know, things are hopefully really back to, back to, to normal. But I do know that it is on, you can buy tickets now. I think you have to buy your tickets online. I don't think you can buy them at the door, at the door, so to speak. But I think probably we're going to, we're definitely going to wait until, until, until next year, um, to, to go to that. But I know that things are, you know, starting to open up. Um, we usually here in Marblehead have a big Fourth of July celebration. There was nothing last year. I mean, it was there was nothing as 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 had to be last year. But normally Crocker Park, which we live right next to, is the venue for music. The whole week of Fourth of July, um, the club here will have parties. There's sailing things. There's there's arts an arts festival that that goes on. Um, so this year, it, it's going to take place, but in a lower key. There isn't going to be music. Um, I just think they didn't have enough time They just to make the plans for that. 
literally the governor just lifted the state of emergency. I, I'm sure it was just two weeks ago. So that only, you know, has just happened and it's just, it's kind of too late to pull some of this together because um, these, these venues here are, are basically run by volunteers. They are going to have an, uh, they are going to have the arts festival. They're having a photography and they're having painting, etc. So Mark has submitted two photographs into, um, into the, to the festival. So he doesn't know if they're in yet or not, but um, he, he submitted two. So we'll know, um, we'll know shortly. Um, and they, I think we're going to have fireworks. I think. We're not having the party here at Crocker Park, like I said. I think the club is having an outdoor lobster event here in the parking lot, so we will we'll be involved in that. Um, and yeah, I think that's it. And the uh, the president of our school, where I work, uh, has in in kind of in in notice of all the hard work and the stress that everyone has gone. Um, gone through this year he's given us two extra days off for fourth of july so that's really nice so that fourth of july week we will be off monday tuesday wednesday and we don't have to work again until thursday thursday friday so that would be really nice school will be fully on campus in the fall so we will be back to being on campus as of the end of august uh, we still don't know what that means. I think we're, our office will probably be hybrid. A couple of days of work at home, a couple of days in the office. We're just we we just we don't have all we don't have all the full information um, yet. But I think that that's what I would like to I would like to to do. We were do we were, we were each doing one day at home already, last last well, before <laughs> before the pandemic. So it would be really nice if we could have two days at home and three days in the office that would work really well for commuting and just being able to get projects projects done and we're we're all fully we're all fully virtual and things have been working just fine so i i don't anticipate that that will be a be a problem but um we we'll, we'll see we don't have official word on that yet but we will be going back um students coming on campus are required to have both vaccines or two both vaccine shots or one of the Johnson and Johnson um, and they have to show proof that they're fully vaccinated before they can come back on onto campus uh, in the fall. I don't believe there will be a mask mandate since there isn't one in the state. Um, so we well, we'll see what that what that looks like uh, going back into going back into Boston on a on a regular basis. Sophia is doing that now. She is traveling in two days a week, and um, that's fine. Uh, she works in the North End, so two days a week and three days at home. I think at some point in the fall be the same thing again I think that they will be going back full-time um, to uh, opening up their opening up their office space so yeah we'll see we're, we're gonna take that kind of take it take it um, take it a day at a take it a day at a time um, now the big thing that is happening is that Sophia and I are going to Egypt at the end of July so that trip is on we have purchased our flights. We have all of our reservations. Um, we're going with Oddly Travel, so it will be an amazing, amazing, amazing trip. Um, we, I was, oh, I was going to show you this because I'm, I just want to say we're, we will be, one of the days we're going to be doing, going to a couple of mosques, and um, you do need to be mindful of, of the, the customs there. Um, so I have a couple of scarves, but I'm also going to bring this beautiful scarf wrap with me that I have had for a couple of years. And I actually got this from Docky um, from the Wool in the Forest podcast. And this is all hand stitched. And it is just beautiful. So I thought this would be perfect I can use this as a head wrap, and I can also use this just as a light wrap in the in the evenings if we're going out anywhere. So I'm very excited to be bringing this bringing this along. I will be wrapped. I will feel like I'm wrapped in a in a hug from her um, every time I bring it out and, and put it on. But this will be this is one of the things I'm going to bring um, I'm going to bring with me. And I thought I would kind of tell you a little bit about what our trip is um, what our trip is going to consist of because I'm really I'm I'm still kind of in shock and, uh, you know, and, and amazed, um, of all the things that we're going to, that we were, we're going to do. Uh, and hopefully I can throw in some pictures here too, of the, the places that we're, that we're going to go. But once we, once we get there, we're going to be, um, we're going to stay at the, I think it's the Mina Hotel. 
Yes, the Marriott Mina house, which is just beautiful. And we will be um, we will be going into in Cairo. So we're going to start out in Cairo. We're going to go into Cairo, and we are going to go up to the Citadel. And we can, you know, that, that sits up on the top of Cairo, so you can look out over the, you know, the entire city uh, cityscape. So that's really going to be great. And you should, if it's a clear day, which it probably will be, you can see the pyramids in the distance, which is really, I, 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 you know, see the pyramids. I can't, I still can't even believe that, that this is going to happen. Poor Sophia is like, mom, I'm going to be, I'm just going to be a crying mess. I'm just going to cry the entire time because, you know, nine-year-old Sophia would be like, would not believe that this is happening. Um, and then we are going to be able to go to the Egyptian Museum of Antiquities, which is brand new. They just finished it and they just, I want to say within the last two months, they've just moved all the exhibits from the old museum into the new museum. So this is going to be a fantastic uh, experience. And through this whole trip, because we're going with Oddly Travel, we have a private guide. So we will have an archaeologist, a private guide archaeologist with us for all of these. So it's just it's just going to be um, really going to be amazing. Um, and then the next day we're going to go to the pyramids at Giza. We're going to go and see the, the Sphinx um, and the Step Pyramid of Saqqara and the Red Pyramid and the Bent Period Pyramid. And then we also have a trip to the Solar Boat Museum as well. Yeah, just just crazy. Um, and then and then we fly to Luxor. <laughs> We're gonna go to Luxor, and we are going to go to the Temple of Karnak, and um, the Temple of Luxor. Uh, so that's gonna be absolutely amazing. And then we will be going on to the um, onto the Nile cruise. So we are gonna be cruising on the steamship Sudan which is the steamship that Agatha Christie uh, sailed on when she went down the Nile. And she based the Death on the Nile on that boat. So Death on the Nile, if you read that book, this is the steamship that we are, we're, we are going to be going on, I think, for five nights. <laughs> it's, just, it's just crazy. It's crazy. Um, we're going to go to the uh, city of Abydos, and we're going to visit the Temple of Seti I., and we're also going to uh, go to the Temple of Dendera. I guess that's the one that has really beautiful, colorful ceilings. And then the, um, the next day we're going to the uh, West Bank of Luxor. We're going to visit the Valley of the Kings and the Valley of the Queens. And the Valley of the Nobles and going to the Temple of Ramses III. And then the next day we're going to be going to the Temple of the, to the, um, dedicated to the God Horus. And uh, then we're going to do an evening visit to Kam Obo Temple, which is great. So that's going to be lights and, and it's just it's lit up at night, which is really, really beautiful. And then we were, are going to go down to, the, to Aswan, to the Temple of Philae. And uh, what's left? And then we'll be going back to the temples of Ramses II at Abu Simbel. And uh, we'll go down to Lake Nasser. And then we'll be coming home after that. But it, it's going to be amazing. And what I'm hoping to do is take you along. <laughs> take you guys along on it. Um, I believe that Mrs. Bakery Bear, uh, let me grab Mrs. Bakery Bear. So Mrs. Bakery Bear will be coming along with us on our trip. She comes everywhere international that we that we go. Mrs. Bakery Bear is a uh, the first pattern that uh, Kay of the Bakery Bears put uh, put out, and this what I still remember watching the first episode of their podcast. And I downloaded the pattern. I bought the pattern and I downloaded it and I brought it to Sophia and I said because she was in high school at the time. I said Sophia, I think you should knit this because at the time she really liked doing these kind of like small fiddly things. And she's like, okay, I'll do this. So Sophia knit this. And it, it turned out amazingly. Great pattern, of course. And she knit it. We stuffed it. And, and then um, Mrs. Bakery Bear stowed away in my luggage when I went to visit Sophia in Japan when she was in college. And then when Sophia moved to, J to Japan for that year, she took Mrs. Bakery Bear along with her as well. And Mrs. Bakery Bear will be coming with us to Egypt. So we, there will be lots of pictures of Mrs. Bakery Bear on her Egypt, Egypt trip. So I'm really hoping to be able to uh, film lots of things. 
and take lots of pictures and so that I can um, I can share this amazing trip with um, with all of you as uh, as well. So next time, <laughs> hopefully that's what we'll be that's what we'll be that's what we'll be doing. Um, yeah, I've just you know we're just enjoying what's here for the summer, um, enjoying the summer weather, uh, enjoying being able to get outside, enjoying not wearing <laughs> wearing a mask. I'm really hopeful that um, you know that the world will will calm down from from this. I hope that wherever you are that um, things are, are easing up. I know Great Britain is had to extend their their locked uh, their partial lockdown, I guess, until sometime in, in July. Um, but you know, I, I think that people are just doing what needs to be done in order to in order to, to beat this. And I'm hopeful that next year at this time we will be not even really thinking about it too much besides getting a booster shot along with your along with your flu along with your flu shot. Um, so I think that's all I have for today. So um, enjoy. Hopefully, you know. Tell me what your knitting is is knitting plans are for uh, for the summer, and uh, I look forward, of course, to our trip to, to Egypt and sharing that all with you. And remember, it's just knitting. Bye.